Uh, I'm delighted to hand over first to, uh, well, Jodine will start, but I'm going to um, introduce our speakers on that session. So we have Nikki Connell from the Emergency Nutrition Network, who's representing the MAMI Global Network on enhanced lactation support for small and nutritionally at risk infants under six months. And then she'll be followed by Jodine Chase from the Infant Feeding and Emergencies Core Group, who will talk about what's next for infant and young child feeding in emergencies. So I'm going to hand over to you, uh, Jodine, and I look forward to hearing this session. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you so much, Grania. Uh, thank you very much for what a wonderful presentation that we've just seen. And thank you to the Global Breastfeeding Collective for hosting us. Um, welcome to two more reasons to step up. I'm Jodine Chase, the Infant Feeding and Emergencies Core Group Facilitator. And first, as you've heard, we have a presentation from the MAMI Global Network, represented by Emergency Nutrition's Nikki Connell. And then afterwards, I'll be coming back to present a new report that's being launched today. Um, please do post your questions in the Q&A as you think of them. Our team of volunteers will answer some questions directly, and some will be answered by me and by Nikki during a short Q&A at the end of our presentations. Over to you, Nikki. Thanks, Jodine. Uh, hello everyone, as Jodine mentioned, my name is Nikki Connell and I'm a Senior Technical Associate with the Emergency Nutrition Network. We're delighted to join your webinar today and see how we can join forces to enhance breastfeeding support and continuity of care for small and nutritionally at-risk infants under six months of age and their mothers, what we refer to as MAMI. We will introduce the MAMI Care Pathway Package and how it can help put step 10 of the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding into practice. As a reminder, step 10 is to coordinate discharge so that parents and their infants have timely access to ongoing support and care. So what is the problem we are facing? MAMI refers to the management of small and nutritionally at-risk infants under six months and their mothers. Small and nutritionally at risk includes infants that are born too early or too small, babies that may be born wasted, underweight or stunted, and those that become malnourished or falter in growth after birth. Millions of infants are affected in the world, as shown by the figures on the slide, and this is a problem across both humanitarian and development settings. Overall, Globally, one in five infants under six months is small or nutritionally at risk. These infants are at higher risk of illness, death, poor development and long-term ill health than their healthy counterparts. For example, an infant with severe underweight in the first six months of life is nearly five times more likely to die than a healthy infant. Nutrition for Growth Commitments, which outline country commitments to tackling malnutrition in all its forms, have recognised the need to target services to small and nutritionally at-risk infants and their mothers if the required progress is to be made. For example, Ireland has committed to take a leadership role on the issue of wasting globally, and in particular, programming targeted at small and nutritionally at-risk infants. So the political leadership is there to address this issue, but we all need to support progress in practice. Step 10 of the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding translates to coordinating discharge so that parents and their infants have timely access to ongoing support and care. At present, we see a gap in practice for vulnerable infants and mothers, particularly from when an infant is aged six weeks to six months. We see poor continuity of care for at-risk infants beyond the immediate postnatal period. Proactive screening for problems is not common. For mothers and infants that do present to health services with clinical or feeding problems, specialised support for breastfeeding up to six months of age is often lacking. And we have an over-reliance on inpatient care with community-based outpatient services rarely available. Breastfeeding is critical to the survival, growth and development of children worldwide. And it's especially so for these young infants who are the furthest left behind. We are here today to see how we can work together to close the care gap and improve access to breastfeeding support for these infants using the MAMI Care Pathway Package. 
The MAMI Care Pathway Package is a piece of implementation guidance that comprises a care pathway framework, user guides, and health worker support materials, including forms, counselling cards, and a support actions booklet to assist practitioners to identify, assess, and manage small and nutritionally at-risk infants under six months of age. Yes. The MAMI Care Pathway Package applies an integrated care pathway approach with a view to achieve continuity of respectful quality care for infants and their mothers across health and nutrition services. It was developed by the MAMI Global Network, led by the Emergency Nutrition Network and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine to help put World Health Organization recommendations for community-based care into practice. Skilled breastfeeding support is central to the Mammy Care Pathway as part of a broader package of clinical care and social support. Mammy covers both maternal and infant health and nutrition, as well as referring pairs on to relevant social and child development services available. Mammy links prevention and treatment, but how does Mammy fit in with the breastfeeding services? you are already providing through IYCF programming. MAMI dovetails with IYCF interventions that operate more at the primary prevention level. MAMI focuses on secondary prevention, the early detection of problems with timely intervention to prevent further deterioration, and also tertiary prevention, which is urgent action to prevent serious consequences of problems should primary and secondary prevention fail. IYCF and MAMI are both essential and complementary initiatives for infants and their mothers. This is a busy slide, so don't worry about reading every detail. What you are looking at on this slide, on the y-axis, is the level of healthcare, so community level, secondary and tertiary health facilities. And on the x-axis is the stage of care. And what we're focused on is the early postnatal period and the period six weeks to six months. The Mammy Care Pathway applies, builds on and connect, connects existing nutrition and health services across primary, secondary and tertiary care. Care is focused at the community level where there is the greatest gap. Screening can happen from pregnancy right through to when the infant is six months of age at a range of health contact points. For example, the infant's first vaccination at six weeks. Moderate risk infants and their mothers who are identified and enrolled in community-based care receive individualized support and counseling for specific feeding and clinical problems. Those that are at high risk are referred to inpatient care until they are considered moderate and can be referred into outpatient care and all infants are enrolled for support to six months of age. So how is the breastfeeding support provided to these infant mother pairs different and complementary to what might be provided in community breastfeeding support program? First, this is a package of care that targets skilled breastfeeding support to at-risk infants under six months and their mothers, rather than to the general population of infants. The needs of these infants may be more complex and the implications of not getting it right even greater. Secondly, skilled breastfeeding counselling is embedded in a larger package of clinical and social care. This may involve referrals to clinical services, maternal mental health services, and other context specific support that the pair may benefit from. Thirdly, Infants and mothers receive regular and continuous support up to six months of age and are not discharged from services until that age is reached. And lastly, as the mother infant pair are being seen regularly, at risk infants and mothers remain on the radar of the health service, so they are primed for early intervention and referral for specialist care if required. Here is an example of how step 10 might look in practice. This example is from a humanitarian context. In 2021, 
save the children were providing services to Venezuelans arriving in Colombia. An assessment found that the rate of exclusive breastfeeding was decreasing with age from 91% in the first month, reducing to 26% at five months of age. A Sexual Health and Reproductive Unit, or SHRU, was set up to provide checkups of prenatal care, family planning services, psychosocial support, and newborn medical attention for infants up to two months of age. IYCF services were also provided to promote, protect, and support breastfeeding. However, small and nutritionally at-risk infants and their mothers were not getting the support they needed from the SHRU, as services were only available for infants up to two months of age, and IYCF services could not follow up the individual mother-infant pairs to provide continued care. So a MAMI programme was initiated in the SHRU. Vulnerable mothers and infants were referred to the MAMI programme, creating continuity of care and providing targeted feeding support alongside existing clinical mental health and food security services to provide a complete package of care. The MAMI services were linked with existing community, inpatient and postnatal services for screening and referral as required. To find out more, please see a link in the chat to a video showcasing interviews of mothers enrolled in this program that should be available shortly. So we now know that putting step 10 into practice is critical to realizing continuity of care between health and nutrition services for at-risk infants under six months and their mothers. Early identification of at-risk infants under six months is an essential action to prevent further decline in the nutrition status of an infant, and the mammy care pathway can support this. It's also clear that skilled breastfeeding counselling is a core component of care for small and nutritionally at-risk infants, a service that needs strengthening in community-based outpatient care. We have a common goal to achieve coordinated discharge so that at-risk infants under six months and their mothers have timely access to ongoing support and care. We call on you to join the Mami Global Network's efforts to work together to reach the most vulnerable and at-risk infants and their mothers. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Nikki. Hello again. I'm Jodine Chase, the IFB Core Group Facilitator. We've been called to step up for breastfeeding in this webinar, and we have already learned so much. This last section is about how we are called to step up during emergencies. So we all know these numbers, almost 90 million people forcibly displaced by the end of 2021, and the rate of displacement due to climate change is twice the rate due to conflict. Children are 30% of the world's population, but they make up 41% of those displaced. Suboptimal breastfeeding leads to over 820,000 deaths per year, while exclusive and continued breastfeeding alongside complementary feeding is the single most effective intervention to prevent deaths in children under the age of five. When protective actions like the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding are in place, when mammy care is available to support the most vulnerable infants, communities are more likely to be breastfeeding communities, and these are better prepared for emergencies. Disasters and humanitarian emergencies disrupt breastfeeding, and additional support is needed both to preserve breastfeeding and also for the food insecure, including those partially or fully dependent on infant formula. We heard earlier this year from WHO how the pervasive, misleading, and aggressive marketing from the $55 billion formula milk industry causes harm. This is especially true during emergencies, which are often exploited through floods of donations and uncontrolled distribution of breast milk substitutes in infant foods. This undermines appropriate infant and young child feeding practices, both during the emergency and beyond. About 20 years ago, the IFE core group was born. It's a global collaboration of agencies and individuals, and we developed operational guidance with evidence-based actions to safeguard life-saving infant and young child feeding in emergencies. In 2010, the World Health Assembly urged member states to adopt the guidance into their own preparedness plans and emergency response. 
So now, 10 years since this call to countries for action, we are releasing the first ever report to examine the progress of member states in fulfilling this commitment. The report has found that progress is being made at the policy level. At the same time, coordination, capacity, and clear systems for tracking progress are lagging. There are gaps in functional multi-sectoral systems to support recommended infant and young child feeding practices in emergencies. This report aims to galvanize member states and the humanitarian and development community to deliver on their global IYCFE commitment. Countries are taking measures. An increased proportion of countries report in Nutridash that they're working on programs to support appropriate IYCFE from 62% in 2016 to 78% in 2020. Kuwait and Lebanon implemented all elements in 2016. Nigeria developed a plan in 2018 that links emergency activities to existing policy and nutrition plans. The global trend in government funding beyond staff salaries has increased over time, but it remains well below the number of countries that report work or the presence of policies, strategies, or action plans. Until 2019, no region had more than 40% of its countries reporting funding beyond staff salaries. Available data suggests significant gaps in the availability of activities that support caregivers in nourishing their infants and young children in emergencies. These gaps exist despite the evidence that these behaviors and the services supporting them are life-saving. Current global data is inadequate to assess the numbers of people that need action, to track unmet needs, and to assess the impact of the emergency and beyond. There are no formal mechanisms for member states to measure their progress and there's no requirement for them to do so. There's no consensus around methodologies for analyzing data in global databases to distinguish between emergency and non-emergency contexts. Member states have the primary responsibility to provide leadership, policy, funding, monitoring and coordination for preparedness and response to emergencies. While progress has been made, we can see there are many gaps. Governments must take the lead, and this report offers six recommendations for member states. A systems approach is needed, and six recommendations are also offered for humanitarian and development communities, recognizing the important and synergistic contributions they make towards creating environments where caregivers can consistently nourish their infants and young children. The first recommendation for governments is to step up and ensure that national and international preparedness plans and emergency responses include adequately funded actions as outlined in the operational guidance. And the humanitarian and development community is also being asked to step up, deliver, develop policy advocacy agendas to promote uptake of actions as outlined in the operational guidance. In the words of Victor Guayo, Director, Nutrition and Child Development, UNICEF, who we heard from earlier, and Francesco Branca, Director of the Department of Nutrition for Health and Development, World Health Organization, Geneva, the COVID-19 pandemic has made it clear that all countries are at risk of an emergency. Now is the time to consolidate gains from the global emergencies of the past decade and to channel these gains into our routine systems and into our preparedness and response capacities. How can you step up? Please start by downloading the report, which will be shared widely in the coming days. You can use it as a tool to start a conversation in your country and to hold those responsible to account. Thank you. And we will now have some time for questions and answers. I want you to note, please, that they will be shared in a document on our website in the coming days after the webinar. So even if the questions aren't being answered right now, you'll be able to look it up and find answers later. So um, Nikki, here's a question that applies to both of us. And I wanna to reference to that uh, quite a few of the resources that you may have questions about are going to be shared or have been shared in the chat already. So Nikki, this applies to both of us. Can these resources or guidance be used in any country or any setting, or are they specific to developing countries or emergency settings? And I'll answer for IYCFE. The answer is yes. A good example is how Ireland will use the operational guidance to develop their own plan in a non-development setting within Ireland. Thinking about the operations guidance more broadly, 
It's been used in a lot of countries, including in my own country of Canada, and it's certainly relevant um, to strengthen support for optimal infant feeding. I look forward to following what Ireland is working on in the next few weeks um, and months. What about for Mammy, Nikki? Yes, thanks, Jodine. And it's the same answer for Mammy, actually, that the Mammy Care Pathway can be used in, in any setting where there are vulnerable infants, which includes both development and emergency settings. We know that that support for skilled breastfeeding falls way short in Ireland and the UK, for example, including in health facilities. And the reasons why infants may be at risk in these settings could include premature infants or infants with a disability. And of course, you, you find those infants all over the world. Uh, so, so like anywhere, the materials are designed for adaptation and contextualization, depending on the situation that you find yourself in. Right, and we've had another question about how uh, training on lactation management and support can be found. And I know um, we certainly have resources available on the IFE Core Group's website. And I know that the Emergency Nutrition Network website has a lot of resources um, to support that. Um, here's another question for you, Nikki. The person asks, if I wanna get involved in MAMI and support vulnerable infants and mothers in my context, what would be the first thing I need to do? Another good question. And I would say first off, um, download the Mammy Care Pathway package from the, uh, the ENN website, the Emergency Nutrition Network website. We host the Mammy Global Network webpage. So that's a good place to start. And the link has been shared in the chat already. Um, and Ashling, I can see has just shared it again now. Um, it's, it's important to have that document, but then of course review and see how it can be adapted and applied to your context and then gather relevant stakeholders across both the health and nutrition sectors to discuss what the needs are in your context, what the current service situation is and where the gaps are and, and how this the mammy care pathway could be applied in your context. It may not be possible, of course, to provide or access all the services that are outlined in the Mammy Care Pathway immediately, but that's okay. Don't let that stop you getting started. You can start off with what is available and then build up the services as you go. And plus as well, it would be useful, I think, to join the Mammy Global Network. Anyone can join, feel free to, to sign up. And that will enable you to connect with other service providers in other contexts so you can learn from each other and you can share questions and, and brainstorm answers together. And details on how to join can also be found on the Emergency Nutrition Network website on the MAMI Global Network page. And I believe that's also just been shared in the chat too. Yes, perfect. Um, we have another question about um, the evidence base. What is the evidence base to show that the MAMI Care Pathway works? Well, of course, it's been developed based on as much evidence as we have. <laughs> There's been a lot of evidence generated and also being generated currently, uh, which has been drawn on. So the core contents of the MAMI Care Pathway Package are based on and are intended to help operationalize the WHO guidelines for the management of infants under six months with severe acute malnutrition that were published in 2013. The WHO guidelines are currently under extensive revision and are specifically looking at prevention and treatment of growth faltering in infants under six months. Uh, and, and these recommendations are due out end of this year or early next, hopefully. So the package builds on a, a broad range and a variety of accumulated evidence and experience and applies well-evidenced interventions like the Integrated Management of Childhood Illnesses, IMCI, and breastfeeding counselling to the context of the most at-risk infants and their mothers. So significant research is underway or planned to build a direct evidence base, including a randomised controlled trial in Ethiopia, state level research in India, and also an intervention trial in South Sudan. And there's been previous research and evidence generated in Bangladesh, um, Ethiopia again, and, and other contexts. Um, Rwanda is another example as well. Um, and su suggested interventions that are included in the Mammy Care Pathway package are fundamentally behavioural and na in nature and also low risk. But of course, they have a high potential for, for benefits to these most vulnerable infants. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a couple of questions over the, the last while related to multiples, and we have one specifically about support for multiples for us as well. And I know that many of our um, uh, breastfeeding counselors and skilled lactation supporters uh, work with families, especially in referrals around multiples. So um, can you answer maybe perhaps in more general terms, can IYC of counselors deliver any aspect of MAMI services? Yes, indeed. Um, you know, the, the, I'm sure many on the call will, um, will have had an experience of trying to support a more vulnerable infant. And we know that they have sometimes more specific needs, uh, depending on the context, depending on the situation. And I think um, what, what makes the Mammy Care Pathway so important is that it takes existing skilled counsellors who are available, who provide, who are well-trained in, in lactation support, but gives a platform to provide uh, closer follow-up and ongoing follow-up for those more vulnerable infants, um, as well as access to other services to provide a more complete holistic package of care. So any lactation counsellor can pick up the care pathway package and see how it can be adapted to their context. Um, and that's really the beauty of it, not a prescribed uh, guideline, uh, you know, that, that where you have to have certain building blocks in place. It really is designed as an approach that can be integrated into existing services that are already there. Um, so it, it really can be picked up by anyone and applied to their context. Um, that sounds uh, terrific. Um, thank you very much, Nikki. This has been uh, really important, I think, for our audience to learn more about uh, the MAMI Care Pathway. And also, we were so excited to be able to uh, launch our report today. So just a reminder that on our website, uh, we've shared some links. Uh, you will be able to access some more of the answers to some of the questions that have been asked. And the Q&A that we've talked about here that we've verbalized will be repeated. Um, I'd like now to thank our long-standing donors and partners who supported the MAMI Global, who support the MAMI Global Network and the IFE Core Group, and who funded the development of the report that we discussed today: the U.S. Aid Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance, Irish Aid, and the Eleanor Crook Foundation. Um, resources and references are at the link that has been shared in the chat. There are some orientation videos available for MAMI. There is also information um, with, you can see MAMI in action, Save the Children and Goals MAMI experiences are available in Bangladesh and in Ethiopia. And also just if you're interested, please get involved, join the MAMI Global Network and also visit the IFE Core Group website if you would like more information about support for infants and young child feeding in emergencies. And that wraps up our presentation. And there are some references for the materials that we've presented. And I thank you all for staying on and listening to us talk about two more reasons to step up. <laughs>